we're here today at one of our key sites for the pine hoverfly. In the whole of the UK, this site where we are now is the only place we know this species is at. So it lives within rotten holes in Scots pine trees. So the larvae live in these holes and the adults, um, when they're flying around, they're equally difficult to find. They seem to be so elusive. So that we've not had a confirmed sighting of one in Scotland of an adult for seven years. Today what we're trying to do is take some of the animals that we've got in our conservation breeding programme at Highland Wildlife Park, uh, bring them out here and do a little swap with some of the wild larvae that are living in some of the stumps that you can see around me here. The aim of today is to introduce more genetic diversity into the conservation breeding program at Highland Wildlife Park and the reason for that is that genetic diversity is really important in terms of a species being able to adapt to changes like disease events, climate change and when you're captive breeding a species over time you're going to lose genetic diversity from that population if you don't bring new individuals into the population. That could be from a different captive population or it could be from the wild. stumps have had uh, big troughs cut into them to mimic natural rot holes. These holes fill up with water and pine sawdust and they make a mulch which turns into a kind of bacterial soup and it's that soup that the larvae, that the pine hoverfly lay their eggs in there and then the larvae hatch out and they, they eat this soup. That's how they grow big and get ready to pupate. So we're just going to have a little look in this rot hole here in this stump for a pine hoverfly larvae. Um, so we can swap it with some of the zoo's ones and increase the genetic diversity of both populations. Yeah, got one. Good. Oh, it's so flipping cute every time I see them. I've got one here, Helen! So in my hand is a pine hoverfly larva and we know that's what it is because it's got a little short tail, well we call it a tail but it's actually a breathing tube. And then if you look at the face you've got a little moustache shaped arc of hooks on the face and also a couple of little kind of horns which looks like a smiley face almost really on the front and it's really cute. So what I've got here is a lovely jam jar hotel that's got a couple of pine hoverfly larvae in that have been captive bred uh, at Highland Wildlife Park as part of our conservation breeding program for this species. And so we are swapping these two guys out for the one that Jen has just found in the stump. So the one that was in the stump is going to go to the park and these two are going to start a new life in the stump here out in the forest. These are the times when you question your career choices. Seven five. Seven seven five. Yeah. Is it square? So we've been on a somewhat a wild goose chase. Um, so yeah. So we have found some, which is great, and we've been able to swap, swap some, which is what we want. Um, and this is actually the first time we've tried to do this, this sort of swapping with the zoos. This is the first time we've been able to actually use this captive bird population to try and boost the wild population. So it's actually really exciting today, and you know the fact that it's not gone exactly as planned or imagined is to be expected for the first sort of trial and we've come up with ways that, that in future years so next year um, if we want to do this that we can do it in a way where it'll perhaps go a bit smoother um, so yeah so it's been a real learning curve really today and we've got some of what we wanted done which is great and we'll just have to cross our fingers for these flies and and look to next year now really This 
is the Pine Hoverfly larvae room. So what you can see here is an awful lot of jam jars because it's a very glamorous and high tech operation. And so every jam jar at the moment will have one or two larvae in that's a product of the breeding season from 2020. And basically the jam jars are set up to mimic the rot holes that we saw in the forest where we were before. And so you've got a jam jar that's filled with uh, pine sawdust and rainwater and the bacteria will grow in there just like it does in the, in the holes in the forest. And this is where our larvae grow up and grow big and strong before they pupate. We have 160 pine hoverfly at the park at the moment. Um, you're seeing a, a portion of them here and we keep them separate in case something happens to the buildings that they're in. Um, and, you know, today we found two <laughs> in, in, in the wild site. And, and previously when Genevieve's done the, the survey there, there was 11. So, you know, this, there's a, a large proportion of the, the UK pine hoverfly um, population currently lives at the park. Um, so it's a very uh, important project, but it's a very high intensity project and there's a lot of pressure on this project as well. This is conservation on a knife edge. These are the kind of projects where we are dragging species back from the brink and trying to make sure that they don't disappear from the UK landscape completely by boosting their numbers and, and giving them safe spaces to live in. How does it feel to be working this hard on a species that you've never seen an adult one in the wild? It's odd. Um, yeah, it's the rarest species I think I've ever worked on. To see an adult would be so exciting. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed, maybe, maybe we will next year.